What's up, everybody? Welcome to On West Gray, the monthly podcast about all things local government in the city of Norman. I'm your host, Tiffany Verska, Chief Communications Officer for the City of Norman, and we appreciate you tuning in. Today, we have a pair of guests with us from the Norman Police Department, Police Chief Kevin Foster and Emergency Communications Manager Russell Anderson. Gentlemen, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, we wanted to have you both on with us to talk about the emergency communication side of the Norman Police Department. Dispatchers are first first responders. They field not only emergency calls, but are oftentimes a go-to for any types of questions or concerns that citizens may have. They're jacks of all trades, and we certainly could not function without them. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what they do. So, Russell, if you could tell us how many staff members make up the emergency communication communications division and what does their average day-to-day look like? So the communications division is allocated 26 personnel, uh, three of those administrative and or technical. So that leaves 23 people on the comm center floor to answer 911 calls, dispatch police, fire, EMS, EMS, animal welfare, and parking service. We process about a thousand calls a day. Busiest time is between 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, obviously, you're going to have the busy party scene. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so you said that the busiest times 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. most days? For the say? most part, yeah. Gotcha. That's interesting. I thought maybe it might be later, but kind of just it depends. Kind of, it kind of grabs the, the lunchtime rush hour and then the after after work rush hour, plus you get the schools letting out in the between. Sure. So what type of trainings do they undergo to be able to do that job? So every dispatcher that hired uh, goes through a six-week dispatch academy. So in there, they're learning the basics of call taking. They're learning the tools that we use, the computer programs that we use to make our job easier. And then after that, for a communications officer one, they'll, they'll finish up with with on-the-floor training of six weeks with a two-week sign-off period with a supervisor. Every time I go into a dispatch center, I've been in a couple now, and I feel like they are looking at 18 screens at one time. Yep. <laughs> Is yep. that near enough time to learn everything? Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to learn, definitely. The first phase is, is the biggest, too. I mean, you've got to learn the difference between a larceny, a burglary, and a robbery, all three different things. Um, on top of all the other stuff that we're, we're dealing with, all the computer programs. Um, but after that, they go into their, their phase two or their communications officer two training. And so that includes another six weeks of patrol and four weeks of fire. And so they're not, they're not really left out on their own for at least half of a year. So they're always with a communications training officer. Gotcha. And you think about just knowing who to call to an emergency, that is a lot of pressure and responsibility. Absolutely. And we're regularly trying to hire these people. We're in a process right now trying to get people. And we are still down to public safety sales tax positions that we have not got yet that would bring our staffing levels up also. Right. And that that brings me to my next question. Um, there's vast shortages in the dispatching profession right now, um, not only at Norman, I think at a lot of departments across the country. Um, can you speak further to that and how exactly NPD is working to recruit and retain dispatchers? So just just getting people to apply for a job right now is, is complicated, let alone on the public safety side. So it is challenging. We hold uh, we hold hiring seminars. We we contact our applicants regularly to make sure they they stay involved. Um, one of the hardest things about keeping keeping them involved in the process is that we're going through the same background that a police officer goes through. So I mean, it, it's taking sometimes six months before we can even hire somebody. Is it true that you guys have a, a therapy? dog for it the is. dispatchers. Did I see that online? It is. We, <laughs> we have the first therapy dog in the whole state Very or cool. in the country, actually, Very cool. uh, for dedicated specifically to a dispatch center. Awesome. Has that, do you think that that has helped your dispatchers? It, it definitely helps my dispatchers. It helps everyone in the building, really. And then when we do hold the hiring seminars and they come down, Bella's always the star of the show. 
I love that. That's what I was going to say. Tell them that they get to hang out with the dog at work because that would be a key for me. Um, So the emergency communications division is currently housed in the basement of the police department. But we're on the verge of a brand new state of the art communication center in coming weeks. um, That's going to get started, I believe, with a groundbreaking. So can you tell me a little bit about this new facility and anything that your team would like to share about the progress there? So a little bit about the current facility. It was uh, remodeled in 2000. We moved from upstairs into the basement. At that point, we had a minimum staffing of two people on shift. Um, So this was in 2000, November 2000. It was set up so that really only four people could could work together. And then we actually had the uh, City of Norman operator down there with us, as well as local bank alarms. So we're monitoring local bank alarms at that same time. It took about Took about six to eight years before we outgrew that. We moved our MIM staffing up to eight, up to four people, and we did some remodeling. Um, and it was really only a few years before we outgrew what we remodeled, and that was six people could fit in there. So we've been kind of sitting at that maximum of six people dispatching for several years now. So the expansion into the new comm center, which will be sixteen stations, is it's a long time coming. Uh, yes. There'll be there'll be some wonderful amenities like uh, we're going to have an exercise room. So you imagine what what a dispatcher goes through the stress of some of the calls that they take. That'll be a way for them, an outlet for them. They'll have a quiet room, so it'll be a a place where they can sit and just kind of relax. And then just an outdoor break room and a full full functioning, not quite fully functioning kitchen, but a kitchen where where they can you know have their own meal, sit down with each other and, and just relax. Sure. And and you said there'll be 16 stations. So if you needed to have all of those filled at one time, that would be possible. Yep. Or expansion to other agencies if they if they so want to partner. Very cool. So so when is this groundbreaking? Groundbreaking is at two o'clock on January nineteenth. We're really excited. Okay, and everybody can can come on out to yep. see what you guys got going on and hear more about the project. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, um, Chief Foster, is there anything else that you would like to add about uh, what your dispatch team does? He's covered it very well. They're a very stressful job that they have down there. And like the decompression room that he talked about that we'll have the new center is a critical part because you just don't realize how rough it is to take a call and you hear people in need or being assaulted that is very injured and you're trying to get help to them and there's nothing you can do but listen very stressful job uh, and you're stuck in one position. And right now that is in the basement of the police department. So I will be very thrilled to get them out and in a place where they can uh, decompress in a decompression room or have a little bit of where they can even step outside in an area to uh, relax a little bit and recover from some of those uh, more stressful, tough calls that they take. I would also close with saying uh, we're regularly hiring for communications. We're regularly hiring police officers, records, animal welfare. Just go to our website and you can always apply or go to newnormancops.com. All right. Newnormancops.com or normanok.gov. Either one of those will get you the information that you need to know. Well, thank you both so much for being here with us today. We're really looking forward to the groundbreaking ceremony on the 19th at 2 o'clock. And that is over across from our water treatment across, plant. Across from the water treatment plant. And we've, we've acquired parking at the Wildwood Church. Okay. So if folks want to go, they just go to that church and, and they'll we'll be shuttled. And we'll have a ride for them. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you all so much again for being with us. We appreciate you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Questions or commentary about On West Gray can be sent into public affairs at normanok.gov. Shout out to our producer and editor, Mr. Bryce Holland of the City of Norman Communication Office. Listeners are reminded that city council elections are coming up on February 14th. The city council members in odd number wards will be up for elections. So that's wards 1, 3, 5, and 7. The deadline to register to vote in this election is January 20th. Until next time, stay engaged, stay informed, and always remember to cast your ballot. I'm Tiffany Verska. Thank you for tuning in to On West Gray.